might have heard about that. Um, we do fund a lot on equipment and, and consumables. We, we uh, fund a lot for international travel, you know. And um, international travel is always the first step into projects, you know. You, you might want to go just to Germany to check in a lab, you know. What, what is this lab doing? Um, we can fund this kind of travel also from my organization, but you need to do it together with a professor. Yeah? But that is only the small scale, what we are funding. Um, what we are mostly doing in terms of projects is normal um, individual grants. Uh, so we give money to a professor who is collaborating with an Indian professor. They both have PhD students, and we cover the, Indian, uh, the German part of it. Yeah? And we send the Indian, uh, the German PhD in this German part of the project to India. And the Indian side in this, of this project is sending his or her PhD students uh, to Germany, always within a project. It's not a fellowship, it's positions. Yeah? So um, uh, this, this is something that we are doing on a, on a routine basis, and most of our money is going into this. Um, what we also do is we, we do fund Indo-German research training groups. Um, where also students are working, PhD students are, are working in these groups, and we only have two of those. And you might want uh, to, write, to write this down. down. Uh, the, the name of, of these centers are International Research Training Groups, where you have PhD students in a, on the German sites, around 20, enrolled in this PhD program, and Indian students enrolled on the Indian site. And their professors are exchanging, actually exchanging the students on a mandatory basis. No German PhD st student is getting his PhD without going to India. And there's not one Indian PhD student who's getting his PhD without going to Germany, without having worked with the German professors. It's around six or eight months. And then the people have to go back into their university and have their uh, PhD viva there. Um, and this is a very successful program. They're both running in Hyderabad, both running at the University of Hyderabad. One is run, uh, is run by Professor Shiva Kumar. Uh, and you can find this program on the website uh, of the University of Hyderabad. His name is uh, Professor Shiva Kumar. And it's a group that is working on, life sci on um, glycosciences. Who knows what glycosciences are? Glycosciences. I'm, I'm a historian. I know it. You might be scientists, huh? More scientists? Mechanical engineering. Okay, glycosciences, they are doing research about, on sugar. You know, wherever sugar is involved in biological processes, they study on it. It's a huge group with around 30 PhD students. And um, if you want to know a little bit more on that, it's quite fascinating, actually. Uh, you can check it on the website. I think if you put in Professor Shiva Kumar's name, you will find it easy, easily. The other group is also at the University of Hyderabad, these guys are working on infectious diseases uh, together with a group from the Free University of Berlin. And there's also around 40 PhD students involved in that. But these PhD students will maybe finish already their PhD in this group in maybe one, two years. Uh, the first generation is already out. So if you are finalizing your MA, maybe in two years, huh? maybe you would like to go for a PhD. And please recall what I told you about the international research training groups, because you will find positions where you can go to Germany, you'll be examined by your Indian professors, but you can go to Germany, do some research there, and go back. And we are having more than 60 of these uh, groups around the world, and the positions are always announced uh, globally. So it's quite some, com some competition, and I thought I might mention that to you, because once you're reaching, reaching this stage, that might be of interest for you. There are also some positions uh, for students for MA students in these groups. I think um, I, I will stop here, and maybe you have questions uh, about g research in Germany as a whole. You might want to know about what we're doing here at the Roadshow, why this pavilion is standing here. Uh, you might know about myself. I was talking about myself being a historian. So what I, am I doing here talking about money? Um, whatever question. Please feel free. It's a unique opportunity. I don't know when I'm coming back. Oh, by the way, we have an office in Hyderabad here, uh, in Banjada Hills, DFG Hyderabad office. It's at the Max Muller Center. 
you can learn German there, and you can also learn more about my organization there. Please, if you had a question. In Germany, there's a big difference in, in our um, perception of research uh, between Germany and India. In India, we know that the so-called hard sciences are those who are the best funded and, and where you can do many things. Um, we do also extend that to the humanities and social sciences and also to architecture. So whenever we have projects, we, we do it in every discipline, from A to Z, from architecture to zoology. So in this project database I was just mentioning, uh, you will also find uh, interesting projects on architecture, uh, design, um, environmental sciences in all different directions. Um, we do also have many projects running on that. And um, by the way, today and tomorrow there's a workshop on uh, urban design uh, from, the environmental, uh, from the environmental point of view from one of our universities. You can meet the uh, professor there, Professor Dolechal. He especially uh, came here to, to meet you guys. And this workshop, I think, is, is going on tomorrow afternoon. So if you check in the program of this whole roadshow, do you have the programs? Is, is, do we have Anthony, could you do me a favor and, and quickly go down to the information center and uh, pick up 20 programs? Yeah, thank you. So kind of you. Yeah? And you will, because there's a, also a well-known architect here who designed the, the pavilion downstairs. Yeah? And you will also be able to talk to him and, and ask him what, what he can tell you. He can tell you much more about architectural research than I can do. It's not in my mind, but it's in our, our, our research databases. And we are offering many interesting short seminars on this topic here as well. So please come and join us in the pavilion. Take a look into the pavilion and come to this workshop tomorrow. Yeah, it's only two hours. So, so that you can, you'll be able to find some information there. Does that answer your question? Mechanical engineering. Wonderful. You have to come. Are you here on Tuesday? On Tuesday, one of the most famous mechanical engineers of India is coming here to give a, to give a talk uh, in the uh, pavilion. His name is Professor uh, Narinda N.K. Gupta. He's from IIT Delhi. And uh, he will actually give an initiation into uh, mechanical engineering. Um, and he is the former vice president of the Indian National Science Academy. Uh, and um, he will be able to tell you a lot uh, about mechanical engineering in Hyderabad also. But of course, yes, I mean, mechanical engineering is, is one of the key uh, disciplines in engineering sciences collaboration that we do fund. And um, in, in Hyderabad, you will find eminent people uh, working on that. I mean, I can just uh, quote to you uh, Professor Padmanabhan uh, here uh, from from the, the Institute of, from the School of Engineering here, uh, and many, many others. Just, just Google it. And they also have a very close interaction with, uh, with Germany. And uh, there are always uh, also Germans here, German students. They just come for one trip, and they, you know, just, just for, for uh, getting a little bit of teaching here. But check on the website of, of the engineering school here. Um, what we also did uh, with respect to engineering, um, we tried to get in touch with the IIT uh, Hyderabad, the new Indian Institute of Technology here in Hyderabad, which has a new engineering wing. Um, is anybody here from the IIT? Which one? IIT Hyderabad. IIT Hyderabad. So um, you would be able to tell your colleague a little bit more, I guess, about all this. Um, I think it's a huge thing that, that is about to come up. I have visited it once. It's, uh, it's just about to start. Um, I, and I know the, uh, some of the uh, institute directors there, they have also great collaboration with Germany. Um, when I'm, by the way, when I'm asked by, by German professors, I've heard about these new IITs, so what's, what's going on there? And I have visited some of the new IITs, uh, Hyderabad, Mandi, and others. Uh, my impression is that um, it's, it's a very good place to go um, because these are institutes which are going to be built up uh, in the, within the next two, three years or so. Um, it will be a fantastic place, an outstanding place to be. And it's maybe at the moment, a good, it's a good moment to enter. You know, because within the next 10 years, maybe the next generation after you will find it extremely tough to enter. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, it's already very difficult to enter, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's uh, outstanding institutes, we all know that. Um, Maybe it's a little bit more difficult to enter at IIT Delhi at the moment. You know what I mean. 
right? But in the next 10 years, when these institutes will have spent all the money that they have, and they have outstanding equipment, um, it will be also uh, uh, very, very difficult to enter. So this is the good moment for you to enter. They are all internationally, uh, they have all international uh, uh, contacts. They are very well connected. Um, they, we, we are interacting uh, with them. For us as, as bureaucrats, as administrators, it is, uh, it is very important for us already to interact uh, with these new IITs. But for us it's the same. You know? We are investing in the future when we are talking to your, to your professors. You know? Because at the moment, obviously, other institutes might be even better. You know? But for us it's, a, it's an investment in the future and for you guys as well. Check on, on, on what's going on there from the universities here uh, uh, and then I just saw from the Alexander from Humboldt Foundation um, your very outstanding professor uh, professor professor Rajan actually you will have to grab her if you're in interested in the in the Humboldt Foundation or everything which is uh, about Germany and um, and German German research in the field of humanities and also many other fields uh, she's the research ambassador here for the for the Alexander from Humboldt Foundation from uh, from the near uh, JNU in uh, in New Delhi. So if you have any questions, she will also give a talk t tomorrow. Um, that's a good opportunity for you to grab her. Actually, tomorrow she might be too busy. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Anything? Um, if you talk about a research proposal, then you would talk about an application from a future PhD student. Yeah. Well, I can try. But then, then maybe my colleague my Apuf Mahendra might step in. From, from, my, from my experience, um, a professor, number one, doesn't have much time. And the better he is, the less time he has. So um, the, your application, what you want to do, has to be very short and crisp. Yeah? Um, but very specific at the same time. Yeah? The professor you're writing to will have two minutes to go through your proposal. So you have to tell them what exactly you want to do. Um, what is your background? I mean, why do you think that you're the best person to be able to do so? Of course, you have to see your CV where you're putting a few points. But maybe you have already worked in a project, which was related a little bit to the topic you would like to work on that. So you would have to give some details on that. Um, you have to add also um, include some information um, about why you exactly want to work with this professor, you know, scientific reasons. And you ha have to prove, maybe quote one or two of the things that he might have published. It's always helpful, you know, which shows him that you know what he, this, this particular professor is doing um, and, that you, and that you actually want to connect with your own idea to what he might have done before, you know. And then you get this professor already interested. Yeah? And then, I mean, the more practical you are also in, in your proposal, if there's a timeline, you know? Just say, in the first year I would like to do this, second year I would like to do this, third year I would like to do this in my research. Write it down. Bullet. Yeah? I mean, afterwards it, it depends a little bit on um, what the fashion is in your discipline, you know? Historians, my colleagues, they can write 100 pages with, without saying much, you know? Um, mathematicians? You put down, they put down, you know, half a page, and that might be a no, new Nobel laureate, you know. So I won't be able to tell you how long your application, your proposal would have to be, because it's a little bit the fashion of, of, of your discipline, yeah. But cross-check a little bit with uh, your colleagues, with your own professor. Yeah, get it cross-checked. This is important, yeah, and be as precise and crisp as possible. I would say um, it is always better to have it. But in some disciplines, if you are only um, participating in some, or you had a conference paper or something, that, that might also be helpful, right? Yeah. Um, what I can tell you, this is maybe a story nice to, to, to listen to, um, about, this question of, uh, about this question of the publications. The, my organization is sending every year a group of 20 students to the Nobel laureates meeting in Lindau. Every year there is a, a meeting in southern Germany where 30, 40 Nobel laureates are coming together. We call it Lindau Nobel laureates meeting. And the Department of Science and Technology every year publishes a call for 
uh, proposals for students to participate with our money. And I'm attending these uh, selection uh, meetings. We are getting around 600 proposals and we have to select 20. But check on this Lindau call for, uh, uh, call for um, participation. Yeah? Check on the DST website, check on, on our DFG website. It's very competitive. But once you get it, you are, you are in the boat, you know? Because we take care of these students also afterwards. Um, so coming back to your publication question. I see uh, lists of publications from uh, the undergraduates and the graduates who are applying for it. Actually, you can apply as an undergraduate. You can apply as a, a graduate um, and also as a PhD student. And we, um, as a ready-made PhD, if you're applying for this Lindau select, selection, uh, we do check the publication lists, but once you have a PhD, you have published papers. But then we see many, you know, like virtual publications and things we don't really know where it was published. We don't like that, you know. We, we, and, and, and the reviews, we like more, less publications, but in peer-reviewed journals. So if you're planning about your own research, Try to get for peer-reviewed journals. Yeah, do a little bit less publications, but do good publications, or and go to professors who have good publications. As as a graduate student, um, I think you um, you should mention you should mention uh, some publications, but it should be good publications, and the topic should be interesting. Don't publish just for the sake of publishing. You know, if you if you are planning as a strategy, how do, what is my publication uh, strategy? Rather go for one good thing than for five bad things. You know, if you have the choice, of course. Okay? Now, the, the, all this question of uh, the competition for have the, having the best job and so on. Um, from my own experience, I can tell you that my decision when I, I started my studies and my PhD, I never listened to what my parents to told me. My parents told me, you have to become a lawyer, you have to become an economist. Um, I, I thought that I can only be good in something what I really like. Yeah? And I'm convinced now about that because that was the right strategy. So I decided to go for humanities and I, I, I really liked what I was doing. I was really interested in what I was doing. So I was, of course, you want to have a good grade. I wanted to have a good grade too. But from my experience, the good grades are coming if you like what you're doing. So don't go for the things that you don't like just because somebody else is telling you or just because it's a fashion. In research, we never know what the fashion is of tomorrow. Just, just do what you like. When, and when you do what you like, you become very good. And when you're very good, everybody wants to have you. That's how it goes. Yeah? Don't follow the fashion. Follow what you want to do. Follow your passion. Yeah. That I will tell the journalist next time when I'm in a press conference. Don't follow fashion. Follow passion. That's nice. And I hope to see you in the pavilion in the next day, in the, within the next days. I'll be very happy to see you there.